In Titus 2, older women are commanded to teach what is good so they can help younger women love their husbands and children. On today's show, you'll hear from older women who will share timeless, relevant biblical wisdom and personal, profound life experiences to help answer your questions and teach what God says is good so you can be the wife and mother you were created to be. Welcome to another episode of Older Women Likewise. Hello, viewers, and welcome. How excited are we to see Isla King healthy and happy off to my this way? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's me. How are you doing, Isla? I'm, well, I'm doing so much better. And I just want to thank everybody for your prayers and your concern. It was a, a scary piece of time there but i knew the lord had me and uh mm -hmm. we just spent the evening in the er but uh, as soon as i got some fluids i was dehydrated and caused wow. that afib but as soon as i got some fluids it straightened itself back up but i did find from the testing that i have a uti and you ladies know how wonderful that medicine makes you feel yes, when you're yeah. taking the UTI, so <laughs> you got medicine uh, so, but um, it's so good to be with everybody tonight. And again, thank you so much yeah. for your prayer. That was okay. scary, Isla. Very yeah. scary for us. So we appreciate you being open about um, what had happened. And because I know a lot of people were concerned and prayed for you. Mm -hmm. Allison, busiest night ever. Well, you, you always have busy nights. What is going on? You have a double header tonight. Tell us I what. <laughs> I just <laughs> finished. Um, doing a talk for the Christian, uh, balancing the Christian life there. They have a lecture series this weekend and I got to kick off the women's track. So I was, that is, I drained the bathtub and now we're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. Well, we're excited to hear what you have tonight about renewing your mind through prayer, because we've been talking about human nature and yeah, so you're going to draw on that, like um, how this helps us work alongside our human nature to um, be where we want to be spiritually. So what do you have for us? So this month, like she said, we've been studying human nature. And tonight I'd like to take a, a closer look at human nature or being tempted by our desires, how it can erode our relationship with God. And I want to explore how prayer can actually be used as a tool to fight against that. Um, let's bring up um, my PowerPoint there. Um, okay, so James 1, 14 and 15 says, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So it's important to know where things are going wrong and what to look out for, because otherwise you're going into battle with a roaring lion. You've got no, no armor on and you're just completely unaware. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 says, put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So how do we put on this new self? How do we renew our mind and, and take that human nature and hold it at bay? Um, Sometimes the things that we see, the visual world, this temporal world that we see, it's right there in your face. And I feel like prayer is a way to just go around and snip those ties to this world and strengthen the ties to the next world, to the Lord. You focus on that and sort of let this temporal world melt away. And sometimes our human nature and deceitful desires, they make our prayers look sometimes like a honey-do list for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we tend to use prayer as a way to bend God to our will. Mm -hmm. 
So um, let's go to my next slide there. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. I hope that by taking a closer look at a few examples in the Bible of prayer, that we can renew our minds and actually not use our deceitful desires to bend God's will to ours, but the opposite, use prayer so that it will bend our will to God. So mm -hmm. let's start off by looking at a core Hebrew prayer. It's called the Shema. It's found in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. So this is a core Hebrew prayer. They took the verse that talks about when you lie down and when you rise up. They took it literally. They said this prayer every morning when they woke up and every day when they went to bed. And I, they, and actually you can see in the picture, the phylactery, that's what that's called, that little black, it's between the frontlet between his eyes. And then to bind them on your hand, this is what, and actually inside those little phylacteries, they had special rabbi approved paper and they wrote in special rabbi approved ink. They would write out this prayer and put it inside those little boxes. Now, I say all that to say this, this was a very important prayer to the Jewish people. So let me ask you ladies, when, when you read this and you understood that it was a prayer, how does it differ from our prayers today? You know, I, I saw it so much as it's God speaking to us, to the people. And when they said the prayer, they were really repeating God's words. And well, yeah. it was not a request for, you know, do this for me, do this for me. What can I do for you? Yes, I thought the same thing, Isla. I was really surprised. I mean, I can appreciate why this is central to them. I mean, it is a central passage, a central mm -hmm. instruction, you know, love the Lord your God. Um, but if it if we were going to what this would sound like if we said it would be um, that would have all the same content, we would say you father of are the one and only God and I love you with all my heart, soul and might right you write your words on my heart and give me the energy and focus to daily teach my children to love you and open their hearts to receive your wisdom. And may everything we think and do bear witness to those outside our family who need you. Um, <laughs> so it's like taking all those concepts instead of reciting almost like a memory verse. If you can rephrase scriptures right. like that and turn them into prayer. So that's how, that's how we would pray that kind of prayer. I think it's more of addressed to God and asking for the things within that. But yeah, I appreciate the picture of the phylacteries is really, really helpful because it's really such a reminder of how now God tells us to write our word, write his words. And in Deuteronomy eleven eighteen, write my words on your hearts and your minds. Right. And then right. you can just see so much, so many more advantages to that. Like you can't forget it at home. If he had said to do the phylacteries, like, oh, no, I forgot my phylactery. Um, you don't inadvertently kind of look at that object as having intrinsic power rather than God. Right. And no persecutor can take it from you. If that if you, his words are written on your heart and mind, that's that's the better good idea. Point. Really yeah. good point. At all of it is focused on God. See, mm -hmm. that's how you renew your mind. It's not OK. Here's what I need. When I originally, they were like, found out this is actually a prayer. It's like, well, they didn't ask for anything. How can that be a prayer? Right. Uh -huh. I, yeah. It was like, oh, I think maybe I have a little work to do. So, 
Um, now let's look at another prayer. The some people call it the model prayer or the Lord's prayer. Um, let's go to my next slide. It's not there. We go. Um, so this is the model prayer or the Lord's prayer uh, found in Matthew six nine through thirteen. Pray then like this: Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So let's talk about this one the same way that we talked about um, the others. And please, uh, ladies in, in the chat, feel free to also add, how does this prayer, the model prayer, how does it differ from our prayers today? So, ladies. Uh, oh, us. Okay. Yes, you. <laughs> well, you know, too often I think we start with, Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me with our request right up front. And we, we couch them in spiritual terms, but it's still, it's do this for me, do that. Whereas Jesus starts out with our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And this are, you know, this is what he's praising God. He starts out with praise rather than, I mean, to, to show how much greater God is than us. Yeah. Uh, rather than, you know, we're on an equal. Let me ask you, let me get my list here of what, what I need. Exactly. Set up that relationship mentally in your head. Right. Some of the thoughts that, some what of the I ideas that I was thinking, Allison, was I like that you, you called it the model prayer because it does say then pray like this. Pray like mm -hmm. this. It doesn't say pray this over and over and over no. and over again, right? Meaningless repetition. I mean, this is a very meaningful prayer, but pray like this. So it is a model, you know, so I really appreciate that. I would say one thing that's different than what we would pray because a lot of these things, we would pray exactly these things. But your kingdom come, you know, this was prayed before the kingdom of God, the church was established. And so now he has made us to be a kingdom. And so we might pray instead of that, something more along the lines of uh, praise you for, you know, your kingdom, king of kings. May my soul willingly bow to the, the knee to your lordship. You know, so it would be a different. Um, we're still praying that the kingdom comes in full measure. But it has, that's one thing that's different in terms of the era that we live in and the era in which Jesus gave this model prayer. Right. I, I think when we are constantly thinking earthly temporal thoughts, mm -hmm. our prayers are going to reflect that. True. And mm -hmm. like Jesus, you can see from his prayer, his thoughts are about God and the kingdom. And it just constantly, when you're thinking heavenly thoughts, then your prayers reflect that. Um, mm -hmm. The first thing that Jesus does is he prays, praises God. So what does this word hallowed in verse nine mean? Well, I'm, your name be created as holy. Is that right, Isla? Yeah, I found consecrated, dedicated, uh, separated from profane things, dedicated to God. And, you know, every time as we're thinking about our father, it should be separate from earthly things, like you said. Uh -huh. Yes, it sets up that mindset of who you are versus who he is. Um, I, did you ever think when you were young, it was how would be thy name? Did you <laughs> that? Was that, or is that just me? I was like, what is I can't say that I did. called hallowed? I thought it was. Uh, how would be thy name? I just thought that. Was, I don't know. Okay. It's not that. It says hallowed. Kids <laughs> have funny thoughts. So. so, to me, this prayer, it starts to immediately separate our human nature or our being carried off by our deceitful desires. It starts to separate that from our spiritual nature. You know, mm -hmm. it's remember who you're talking to. It's yeah. praise and worship, your will, not mine. We firmly fix our eyes on God and he becomes important and we become less. Mm -hmm. 
can I add a little side point, Allison? Sure. And I don't know if you were going to go here or not, but hallowed be thy name, your name be holy, your name be sanctified or honored. Um, all day, every day, we hear people saying, oh, my God. And you know what? This is a biblical phrase in the right circumstance. Um, yeah. If you're calling on the Lord and tragedy, you can see death coming at you. That is so appropriate. Yeah. Psalms 59.1, Psalm 71.4, et cetera, et cetera. But God is so omnipotent and so powerful. There needs to be a fear, like in every fiber of our being, when we are around even just the sacred word that represents him in any given language. He holds our unchangeable eternity and our eternal destination in the palm of his hands. And yeah. you can't think of another word to express like casual uh, amazement. You know, how about wow? Wow yeah. work. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's stay away from that. Right. Yeah. Unless yeah. you mean it. Unless it's. An exclamation, but sure. not as yeah. just a throwaway phrase. Yeah, good. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so if we look at verse nine here, um, is that a there we go? Um, oh no, pardon me, verse 11. Um, how many temporal things, earthly things, does Jesus ask for? Yes, one, and what is it? Four. Daily, Daily bread. bread. Like, it's not even Chick-fil-A, right? It's not <laughs> fancy. It's just like, this stuff, so not important to me. Like, daily mm -hmm. bread. And I yeah. think when I look at my prayers and I look at this, there's a big difference. I mean, that's not to say that we're not supposed to ask God and plead for him and whatever. That's not. But it's like, my thoughts are not as, as they're too temporal. I'm too, okay here's a list. We got to do this. And I'm worried about this person and we have to do this and this, and I need this. And, and this model prayer doesn't look like that. Not to me. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. Um, why do our, why do you think like when you're talking about motivation, why do you think our prayers differ so greatly from these examples? And if you're watching, please feel free to put something in the chat. What What is it about our human nature that causes our prayers to be so different? What do you guys think? We are really, I mean, we're self-centered. We start out self-centered. <laughs> I mean, babies are the most self-centered. And we have to unlearn that self-centeredness to a certain extent. I mean, we have to take care of ourselves, but but we're so self-centered that we want what we want and we have to fight against that human nature all our yeah. lives. And um, it's, it's almost uncomfortable to most people to praise God for more than just a little bit, you know, to, to think of the psalmist writing and saying Constant the thing. Praise. Yeah. It seems really awkward to us, I think. And, um, we have to work on that being part of what we say to God. I mean, the Psalms are all about speaking to God, whereas, you know, and, and it's about God where the prayers are not all the Psalms with the praise is, whereas a prayer is oftentimes is about us. So we have to work on that. Yeah. The sure. thought that I had around your question, Allison, was just, I think we tend to do that because we think our security, maybe our peace, our joy is dependent upon his gifts. But in reality, everything is dependent instead on the giver of the gifts. So for mature Christians, their prayers will reflect less and less selfishness, I think. Right. Well, I think too, uh, we look, most of us look forward to a certain number of years of life, we think, you know, I mean, I, I keep I, partly jokingly, partly seriously, I say, hey, going to 30 years, you know, I think I can be worth something for 30 years, which is a ridiculously long period of time. And y'all are younger <laughs> than I am. But, you know, we, we don't have that concept of daily bread. I, let me just have enough for today because need today and tomorrow and next week and five years and 10 years, you know, and so forth. Yes. And 
we it takes a, we have to work on that confidence in God that to for us to have enough for today and not worry about everything you know from now on yeah i i completely agree um let's let's look at dana burke had had a comment it says um we're often way too comfortable with this world and all it entails which leads us to pray about yeah. everything physical rather than spiritual i that's i think that so is true. hitting the nail on the head i think also we forget who god is you know, because he's not right there being awesome and, you know, with a whirlwind or whatever. Yeah. We just tend to not see it. And we forget that he breathed the universe into, you know, breathes stars. He holds the, and it's like, I have to remind myself, this is who I'm talking to. And I know, mm -hmm. um, I know sometimes when I come home from um, wrangling divas and all these, you know, when you are in a room full of divas, you have to be the alpha diva. Okay. Um, and yeah. I drive the bus. So you have to be that cool. alpha diva. But when I come home and I'm still in alpha diva mode and my husband is like, oh. I do not sing for you. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> and it's the same thing. Sometimes when we pray, we forget, oh, we got to no. That remember who you are speaking to. Mm -hmm. um, there was one time in church we had uh, one of the speakers just put a chair up there up front and just said, I want you to imagine that Jesus is sitting here because he is. He's here. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, it's right there. Yeah. It's because we can't mm -hmm. see it. Um, yeah. Another thing. Do you have another one, Cindy? No, I just wanted to say, never forget the omnipresence of God ever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know. True. Um, Matthew thirteen. Let's bring. Oh wait. There we go. Um, says, as for what was sown among the thorns, this is one of the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. So. I, you know, I read this parable of the sower just recently and it's, you know, how sometimes you read it and it's like, oh, wow, that's me. <laughs> I thought I was the good soil, but I, I actually have this picture of, you know, that movie, the Jumanji movie where the jungle vines like start climbing all over them and carrying them off. That's what happens with the cares yeah. of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. And we don't realize that's what's happening. We don't realize that the cares of the world are pulling us away. And, and our prayers reflect that. Mm -hmm. How wise of God to use that analogy of thorns or, or tares, um, weeds, because how often do gardeners weed their garden? Because those things are popping up all the time. So yeah, good point, Allison. Um, okay, so what can we learn from Jesus's example of denying his human side um, by renewing his mind and fasting and praying? His example of that. Um, I have one like in, um, let's see, Luke 5, 15 and 16, but now even more. This is after he healed someone or he was healing people. Okay. And I just want you to think about, let's say your mama is lame and there is Jesus, right? Who is going to stand in your way? Who? Nobody. I would, I, okay, just honestly, if we're just honest, I would mow over your grandma to get my mama up. Okay. <laughs> so you have to think about people are thronging and they're desperate. They need, yes. okay. And, and where else are they going to go? So right. here we are, but now even more, the report about him went abroad and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities but he would withdraw to desolate places. Mm -hmm. pray. Mm -hmm. So I think as women, especially our family needs us. Like they need, I need to do this. I need, they need me. And when somebody needs you, you're just so laser focused on that. But Jesus would retreat to the wilderness. Like, mm -hmm. do we do that? Do we do that? So what can we learn from this, from his example of doing this? Well, we're going to need I, silence every day. What do you think, Ayla? Yeah. Well, I, it reminds me a, a little bit about um, when you're flying on the airplane and they tell you if we hit 
turbulence or where you, you lose pressure that you're going to get the oxygen mask fit yours first and then help somebody else that uh, Jesus had to strengthen himself because, you know, I think about that every day. He woke up human again. You know, I mean, it was just, <laughs> yeah. he's got to go through day, he's gotta go through this again. And um, uh, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be flippant about it. I just think about he was divine and now he's human and he's got to do this another day, but he's got mm -hmm. to fortify himself in order to be able to give to the people the teaching mm -hmm. uh, and the, the strengthening that they need. Uh, and that's what we have to do sometimes for ourselves, for our families, for our husband, uh, on our job, uh, with the perhaps the ladies class that we're teaching. We need to pray so that we can be strengthened in the Lord. And, and, I just have to remind myself, okay, if Jesus had to take time away and yeah. you're not doing that, like mm -hmm. even Jesus needed to retreat to the wilderness. We How much to... more? <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's the world, you know, and I even picture the people thronging upon him and it's the earthly things. And it's like, no, I have to take time, separate this vision of earthly temporal things and strengthen this because my human desires are here. Uh -huh. Things I can see are in my face. But we and need the thing that go ahead. Con just constantly strengthen this prayer thing, the constant the relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Even in Jesus's case, even um you mentioned fasting, like what can we learn from Jesus' example of denying his human side by fasting and prayer? And so even if it meant I'm going to skip eating in order to have this kind of time, this quality of time that you guys are describing with God and prayer. And it was, to me, that was such a reminder of, you know, the, how we need to learn to eat, to um, have more of a passion for spiritual food, even more than physical food. Job 23, 12 says, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my portion of food. And it's a lot like Matthew 5, 6, where Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they should be filled. And then lastly, John 4, 34 is where Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So fasting is something to be considered, isn't it, you guys? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to say one of the most destructive practices of this generation is that we value our own thoughts you know well i think this and i think that and I, everyone and it, it it's okay this person has a degree in calculus and this person is in the third grade but if they think that this calculus man is wrong that's it these are this is that's my truth that's it's my truth allison yes and you vow my own thoughts are just so important. And how are you going to strengthen this bond with the creator of the universe if you're so busy thinking how that your thoughts and you what thinking yourself is so important? Isaiah 55, 8, 9, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my mm. thoughts and your thoughts. Mm -hmm. In order... I love that the model prayer and and the Shema, both of them mm -hmm. start off with, let me just tell you who he is first. Yeah. Okay. Then you can start your stuff. But let's just establish this right yeah. off the bat. Mm -hmm. So um, I also want to ask, um, what are some helpful things that you've learned through the years that um, fill up your prayer life? Mm. So do you guys have some tips for us? And and ladies in the audience, feel free. We would love to hear your wisdom. Well, I'm a big fan of prayer journaling. And so every day, I mean, I ha I don't know if I've got 20 prompts altogether, but a lot of them are focused, are, are spiritual focus. I, I single in on one thing today that I mostly praise God for. And I, and I do all this electronically, but 
So I will do, I will think of a praise and then also what I'm thankful for. And for a lot of years, I would write five a day. Now I write one a day because I got so many prompts that I'm doing. Um, one confession, like where do I feel today most vulnerable? And so I'll write that out to God and, and put that before that. his throne. Um, an intercession, like who most needs my prayers today? We see so many needs on Facebook and everything. And then a casted care. So that's going to be around like what more than anything else is weighing my heart down today. So every day I'm writing that out. And I'll, lately, since I've been swimming for 40 minutes every morning, wow. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll do this thing where I will have a theme in my head. Like I'm only going to do praise today during my swim. And I'm saying this because if you're a runner, you could do this. If you've got something you're doing every day, you could do something similar to this. So this is going to be my praise day. So I'll think of a different, for every length of the pool, I'll think of one and I'll focus on one different praise. Maybe the next time I swim, it'll be one thing I'm thankful for. And I'll kind of go through the categories that I mentioned. What are, do I have? I have enough casted cares to last 40 minutes, to be honest, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, maybe you've got some windows of time like that, you know, where you're doing kind of a mindless, necessary thing. You can put your prayer life, kind of connect your prayer life to that. Mm -hmm. I can remember when the babies were little and I would be rocking the baby, feeding the baby, et cetera, to pray during that time because you can't really, you know, you can't write something down. There's, there's no, right. uh, I mean, it's just, time and there you are with your child saying prayer to God praising God I mean the mm -hmm. kids hearing this stuff you know so there's that yeah. benefit and it also is calming and um it, it's a really good uh, it's a really good thing in a lot of ways to do but it really That's brings great. you closer to God perhaps at a time when when your babies are little it just feels like every you know Sometimes things can really feel out of control, but yes. this is that time when you have time that you can spend with God and there's God with you, with your child. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we have a live comment here. Maggie Berry says, making a habit of praying throughout the day has helped me. And I, yes. I really, yeah, just that constant being mm -hmm. in prayer all the way through. Um mm -hmm. I, there's this one thing that has helped me spread my prayers out and think a little more, I guess, globally. If you'll bring up this um, next slide, it's called the five finger prayer. Okay. So you start off with praise and thanks. So I feel like both the Shema and the model prayer, both of those start off with praise and thanks. So, but then you start with, okay, so let me get my hand in the, here we go. Um, you start off with your thumb. That's closest to you. So that would be you praying for your family. Okay. Those closest to you. Then mm -hmm. we would go to your pointer finger. And though that is for people who point you to God. So that would be the elders, the deacons, um, it, any kind of thing teaching you. Okay. And then you go to your middle finger. That is government. Okay. Because it's the tallest. Um, and I just want to ask you, like, are we all praying for the government? Because you know what? It kind of looks like we're not, to be honest. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to be praying for our government mm -hmm. um, every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then anybody who's ever been an instrumentalist, you know that your ring finger is your weakest finger. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that would be the weak. It's usually the sick, but... I think sometimes we focus so much on the the physically yeah. sick that we miss the spiritually sick. Like mm -hmm. that's way, way worse. Like this, this house is on fire and we need to address it. Let's Amen. pray for those, not just that are sick, but are spiritually sick. And then the pinky is you, the smallest one. You finally get to you. And then you can pray for something, you know, you can look up the fruit of the spirit and say, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness. One of those to pick something that you are working on yourself. But if you go through that, it helps you because otherwise you just start with your pinky and that's it. It's like me, 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 me. But that <laughs> and then it spreads yeah. it out 
-hmm. gives you other things to pray. Um, also one other thing that helps me, let's move to that next slide is praying scripture. You were talking about this in the beginning mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, she's stealing my stuff. Oh <laughs> no, it's all the same. So this is a, a, one of my uh, prayers that, well, it's a scripture that I say a lot, like when you're waiting to talk and they're doing your bio and you're like shaking, you're scared. This is, mm -hmm. I'm you know, I fear for I'm not, I'm with you. Be not dismayed. This is what I'm saying in my, like, if I'm on a plane and it's taken off, this is what I'm saying in my head over and over and over. But if you look at this and you turn this scripture into a prayer, the fear not for I am with you would be, Lord, help me not to fear and remember wow. that you are with me. Exactly what you were saying in the beginning, Cindy. Help me not to mm -hmm. be dismayed and remember that you are my God. Remind me that you'll help me and you will help me. You know, yeah. you'll uphold me with your righteous right hand. I, and mm -hmm. I feel so it's so much more powerful because this is what God said. This is God's mm -hmm. word that you are praying. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it kind of separate, once again, separates the earthly temporal from, and strengthens this relationship, the up and down relationship with God. Mm, love it. Great idea. Mm -hmm. So I, also have any I, others? I had a couple. Um, I think, especially when we're talking in uh, the part, part of our program tonight, where we were talking about the holiness of God and like, do you see what's happening? The creator of the universe, like, would you be nervous talking to a president or something like, okay, this is the creator of the universe and he wants to hear you, but to visualize yourself approaching God on his throne you know, and his smiling upon you because you've taken to heart his words about your casting your cares yes. before his feet. Um, he's there and ready to hear your heart. So I think that that is one technique, especially of realizing what a holy moment it is. Um, let's see. Right. Yeah. Uh, I guess um, the other version of you talked about praying through something like rewording a passage in the language of prayer, you can also, especially if you're doing your daily Bible reading, we've talked about this idea that you're reading through your daily Bible reading and something strikes you that you want to praise God about or something that you need to confess or a concern that reminds you of a situation. And so pausing, praying that out and then opening your eyes and continuing to read until, until something else strikes you. So that's another version of um, praying the scriptures or praying, you know, praying in response to the scriptures, I suppose. Mm -hmm. that was Isla, do you have anything? One thing that really helps my praise prayers is to go outside at night and pray. Oh. Or you feel about that big, you know, and, yeah. and you realize, the, you know, yes. you think of the enormity of the universe and how God has made it all and keeps it all under control it really helps you to focus on praising God. Mm -hmm. uh, Do that. Well, it's like I, think, on, think on things that are lovely. So, so lovely, isn't it? Ida? It helps you re once again, remember your place. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Well, to wrap this up, um, I, I remember a time when I was, I was in high school and about to go to college. It was just a time where my life was very, like everything was changing and it was very stressful. There were a lot of things going on. And I remember we sat down to Thanksgiving dinner and my grandfather, who some, some of you may know with Marshall Patton, um, he sat down and he said this prayer and <laughs> I don't remember what he said, but I just remember sitting there with my head bowed and my eyes closed thinking this man knows God. Yes. And he understood like the privilege of standing before and the rock, the steady rock, like my life just seemed like this. And he was solid. And I just remember thinking, I just wanted to stand next to him so I could get some of that on me. <laughs> yes. You know, and, and the truth is we can all have it. It is mm -hmm. free 24-7, 365 days a year. We can pray to the creator 
of the universe. You know, the song, oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Just constant. Um, James says that an effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And it does. James 4, 2 says, um, you do not have because you do not ask. And then really? Romans 8, 26 says, even if you don't know what to pray, the spirit will intercede for you. Hallelujah. So anyone that thinks yeah. all of this is just too overwhelming and you don't, I, what an awesome God we serve that he even mm -hmm. has that covered. And um, I, I think that constant renewal of your mind, the cutting the ties to this world and strengthening that link to you and the Lord, how grateful we are that we have that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, Allison. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for what you were, how hard you worked on this, despite your like a double header tonight. <laughs> Um, cause this really is the key, isn't it? To overcoming, um, the darker parts of our human nature, right. you know, and to making the most of how God has created us. Um, I guess a few concluding thoughts I have is that every parent wants a close relationship with their child and our heavenly father is no different. Like Allison's bringing out, like, this is the creator of the universe. And at the same time, he's your heavenly father. Our prayers tell, um, our prayers, he tells us, are so sweet to him that they're like golden bowls full of incense, fra a fragrant aroma, according to Revelation 5 8. Wouldn't you love to see what the church would look like if each of us recommitted ourselves to being entirely devoted to prayer? I mean, we can tap into the very power that spoke the world into existence. Can you imagine? I mean, prayer. So changes things. So thank you again, Allison. Yeah. Um, so this concludes our month on human nature that we talked about. And so next month, we're going to transition in our 12 foundation series that we're working through. We've talked about God. We've talked about eternity um, and some other things that led us to human nature. And so next month, we're talking all month about temptation, what it is. And then how to overcome it. <laughs> so we'll talk about that. It's, it's going to be a great month. This, this has been a wonderful month of, of focusing on and thinking about our human nature and overcoming it. And it really leads nicely into next month to talk about temptation. And I hope that you will, uh, viewers will uh, join us next week as we do a foundation lesson on temptation and overcoming that temptation. And that's on Thursday evenings at eight o'clock. And we know that uh, some of you, may, perhaps many of you watch it at another time or listen to the podcast. And we're really glad that you're able to hear us and to hear God's word presented to you. And thank you so much for your support, for following and liking yeah. us. Uh, on Facebook and, and um, uh, subscribing to the channel on YouTube. Um, and Instagram. Sure. Oh, I'm and Instagram. Sorry. And Spotify. And Instagram. I, yeah, I, always forget. <laughs> I always forget about those. <laughs> um, be sure also to uh, watch and listen to Answering Religious Error on Tuesday evenings at 8 o'clock Eastern and on Wednesdays the question and answer period at noon. Be sure to uh, continue to watch and listen to those to receive even more Bible teaching uh, throughout your week. So thank you again, Allison, for presenting such a wonderful lesson. Great, and, you guys, uh, great thank comments. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for your comments. And please, viewers, if uh, you're watching this later on, add your comments as well. Yes. Uh, it uplifts and encourages everybody. So we hope you all have a very good evening. Bye-bye.